CBS 6 News starts now. Good evening and thanks for joining us on CBS 6 News. I'm Leanne DeRosa. The wind is a lot calmer this evening and power is restored for thousands of homes in the capital region that went dark last night. Trees and power lines came down across the area. This one in Troy on Highland Avenue last night where a tree came down on a car. Then this is in Hamburg, New York, out more west near Buffalo, where storms created flooding problems along Lake Erie shoreline, filling the street with several inches of water. Governor Hochul spoke earlier today about the widespread power outages across New York. Right now, the main problem is power outages. Nearly 100,000 homes lost power during the height of this. Over 200,000 already restored as, and as of just a short time ago. We have 97,000 people still without power. Without power during a very, very cold time. The governor says nearly 10,000 state and out-of-state utility crews are working on restoring power across the hard-hit areas. And in the capital region, it was much calmer and sunnier weather today as we look out over Troy with our Fryhofer Skycam Network. Meteorologist Craig Adams joins us now. Craig, how does the forecast look tonight? Well, I think it's going to be pretty tranquil. Uh, we're going to see those winds settling down. 46 today, so not the 60-degree readings that we had yesterday. But nonetheless, uh, with the bright skies, it was a nice trade-off. As we take a look at the satellite picture, you can see the clear weather, the front that brought yesterday's action now offshore. So we have a quiet night ahead, and we've got a couple of quiet days to look forward to as we head into the start of the upcoming week. Let's take a look at our Fryhopper Sky Cam in Schenectady right now, 39 degrees. And the winds are settling down from the brisk conditions that we had about the area, but there will still be a light breeze around tonight. Albany 42 at the present time. And as we check out the view from Glens Falls, the temperature there in the upper 30s. So tonight's forecast has fair skies about the area, low temperatures 30 to 35 and winds subsiding to a light breeze. All right, tomorrow we're going to add a few more degrees on the temperatures. It'll feel pretty nice, although we'll still contend with that breeze from time to time tomorrow. We'll talk about uh, how long we'll be able to extend this uh, milder than normal weather before it maybe gets kind of cold again. More on that coming up shortly. Thanks, Craig. The desperate search for survivors continues as more than 100 people are feared dead after historic tornadoes devastated Kentucky and a string of states in the Midwest and South. CBS News correspondent Laura Podesta is at the center of the damage in Mayfield, Kentucky tonight. Joyful and triumphant. Less than two weeks before Christmas, two congregations prayed outside the ruins of this church in Mayfield, Kentucky Sunday. A part of us has been taken. The community is grieving after Friday night's massive tornado leveled the small city. There are tears, but there are also hugs. Search and rescue workers looking for survivors across the region are battling against time and hoping for miracles. Our emergency management people are out there um, going door to door, but there aren't any doors. Kentucky Governor Andy Bashir warns the state's death toll could top 100. A lot of this is going through the blocks and the rubble. If you can reach it and, and trying to see if there are people there um, dead or alive. The twister wiped out a candle factory where more than 100 people worked ahead of the holidays. Authorities found 40 survivors there on Saturday. It is insane what Mother Nature did in just a span of minutes. 11 shelters and state parks will give refuge to people whose homes were leveled or damaged. My back door blowed in my face, the glass. 66 year old Mayfield resident Janet Kemp's home was hit, but it's still standing. And we got down over our dogs and we were both praying. More than a dozen people died in five other states, including at least six in Illinois where an Amazon warehouse in Edwardsville was ripped apart. Laura Podesta, CBS News, Mayfield, Kentucky. And right now we're taking a live look down at Mayfield, Kentucky, where rescuers are still rushing to search for survivors trapped in the rubble after those severe tornadoes ripped through several states. They tore apart homes and businesses, as you saw, downing power lines and killing dozens of people. We'll continue following that for you. 
New at 6.30 tonight, two Democratic candidates running for the role of New York State Attorney General are dropping out of the race. It was just Friday when candidate Daniel Goldman announced he was stepping down to make more room for Attorney General Letitia James. James announced Thursday she was pulling out of the governor's race because she has more work to do as New York's Attorney General and Goldman is backing her to stay there. He says James has been a, quote, hardworking and effective advocate for justice for New Yorkers and others around the country. Then earlier this evening, we learned attorney Zephyr Teachout also trading in her chance at the position to keep A.G. James where she is. It's not the first time Zephyr Teachout was trying to beat A.G., nor the first time she'd be running against Attorney General Letitia James. She lost to James when they both ran for the Democratic ticket in 2018. Tonight on Twitter, Teachout wrote, quote, Our campaign for New York Attorney General has always been rooted in doing the best for New Yorkers, end quote. She commended James's leadership and dedication to being a public servant and said she strongly supports James in her re-election campaign and her fight for getting New Yorkers justice. Art and entertainment venues across the capital region are getting a big financial boost to help them recover from the pandemic shutdown. Today, Senator Chuck Schumer announced more than $39 million will go to live venues, movie theaters, and other art institutions across the capital region. And Proctor's Theater in downtown Schenectady will get $10 million. That's where this announcement was. It's all thanks to the Shuttered Venue Opera Operators Grant, otherwise known as the Save Our Stages program. Proctor's leaders say when COVID shut them down in 2020, they went from a $30 million a year organization to virtually zero. This money makes it possible for them to reopen. We are delighted to be reopened. Our peers are delighted to be reopened. It will take some time before our audiences come back 100%. But in the meantime, through the support of the Shuttered Venues Operator Grant Program, we have the capacity to be reopened, and we have the capacity to host people back. Senator Schumer says art and entertainment venues are the hearts of cultural life and a driving force in the local economies as people eat, shop, and enjoy a night out. We're still working on learning the identity of a person who was killed in an overnight car crash in Troy. It happened on Mill Street near the intersection with Erie just before 1 o'clock this morning. Troy police say it was a single vehicle crash and none of the occupants had, have died. And one of the occupants have died. We're told officials were on scene through the early hours, closing off Mill Street for a time. Stay with CBS 6 News as we get more updates. Tonight, municipalities across the state have just a few weeks to left to opt out of allowing marijuana dispensaries or other retail sales within their jurisdictions. This comes after the legislation of cannabis in the state was passed back in March. Now, some capital region mun municipalities were quick to make decisions, while others are still weighing the options. CBS 6's Emma Quinn looks into where these municipalities stand as the deadline approaches. The city of Schenectady is the latest municipality choosing to opt out of New York State's legalization of commercial cannabis after the city council voted no on December 6th. But Mayor Gary McCarthy wants the city council to reconsider as he believes the city can manage the dispensaries. I'm not necessarily condoning that, but it's just the reality of it. And would encourage the council to let that move forward as we work with the state to get rules and regulations adopted. Meanwhile, other municipalities like Clifton Park have yet to make any decisions. Town Supervisor Phil Barrett tells CBS 6 they received public input and community members had mixed feelings. Town officials will decide this Monday. While some are still opting out or still deciding, others are choosing to allow the commercial use. City of Troy officials sent a statement to CBS 6 saying they don't intend to opt out adding the city's zoning laws are being revised for cannabis sales. Albany Mayor Kathy Sheehan also said the city intends to allow sales. Well, we don't have any intention of opting out. I believe that the Common Council has discussed it. They don't have any intention of opting out. And so we're looking at uh, potential uh, sites. We have an internal team um, with representation from all of our departments to ensure that once the state is done finishing its regulatory work, that we are ready and prepared um, to, uh, to be open for business. Reporting in the Capital Region, Emma Quinn, CBS 6 News. 
Again, that deadline is December 31st for municipalities to opt out of the legislation. According to the state, any community that chooses to opt out will also have the option to opt back in in the future. Still to come, a local farm's dedication to a lost loved one. It's taking root in Latham. How the community is supporting the family's very own giving tree. And due to rising coronavirus cases, the CBS 6 Melodies of Christmas will not be an in-person show this year, but we'll carry on the tradition with a broadcast special that you can enjoy from the comfort and safety of your own home. We will announce broadcast dates very soon, so stay tuned for that information on air and online. Owners of a local farm are remembering a lost family member by donating to a local organization, and the community is coming out in big ways to help. On the Farm in Latham created a memorial giving tree in honor of their family member and former owner, Nick Huben. He was killed in a car accident in November of 2020. His family says he loved the holidays and often donated to local charities to help people in need. So to give back, On the Farm is collecting new or gently used winter clothing items. They'll be given to Unity House in Troy. You can put the donations in the bin right next to the Christmas tree like you see here through Christmas Day. And that tree stays lit 24 hours a day, seven days a week until then. The family says there have been an enormous amount of community support and donations given. The family says this helps keep Nick's memory and caring heart alive. Another local business is working to ensure everyone will have a warm winter. Blown Away Salon on Union Street in downtown Schenectady has its annual tree up outside decorated with hats and mittens. A sign on the tree says, take one if needed. Owner Michael Marcello says he refills the tree every day. He buys some of the items and others are donated by clients. He says he does it because people need the help, but the tree isn't all that he does. Well, I always have clothes. You know, people donate clothes, and I usually have, you know, the tuna fish kits and um, stuff that people can eat. And I always have little packages of water with um, socks and uh, underwear. He says he's been doing this for years, including the seven years at this specific location. Well, it was nice to see the bright skies return today. This is how it looked at sunset over in the southern Berkshires. Thanks to Jim Meehan for sending this photo in as the sun was going down. And right now we are experiencing our earliest sunset times of the year. So daylight is kind of at a premium. 421 and this will continue through tomorrow. And then actually the sunset times will start going back in the other direction. Although the days will continue to get shorter as we approach the uh, winter solstice, which is on the 21st of this month, as those sunrises will continue to get later. And uh, when we see this advance to 422, it's going to kind of stay there and we're only going to gain a few seconds on the back end of the day initially. It takes a little while to get that uh, daylight to start coming back at a more noticeable trend, but we will start going back in that direction before you know it. All right, Saratoga Springs right now in our Fry Hopper Sky Cam, 38 degrees, and skies are nice and clear as we check out the view from Pittsfield. Temperature there in the mid 30s, and heading out to Amsterdam, temperatures in the upper 30s at the present time with clear skies prevailing. All right, we have high pressure building to our south after the passage of the frontal system that brought last night's rather windy conditions. So it's now offshore, still have a pretty decent pressure gradient about the area. So we'll have a breeze continuing into this evening. It's going to continue to lessen though, but we'll have a light breeze into the nighttime period. High pressure settles just a little bit further to our south and east tomorrow. It gives us a dry day. There's a weak upper level disturbance passing well to our north. We'll see a few spillover high and mid-level clouds late tonight, but uh, they'll pass through with little fanfare. So tomorrow a lot of sunshine returns. Still going to have a bit of a breeze out there again as that pressure gradient tightens up a bit with this high pressure ridge continuing to nose a little bit further northward. But all in all, a nice day tomorrow with temperatures that will warm up probably to around 50 here in the capital region. Going to have another warm front gradually approaching and that front will be lifting up over the area come 
Thursday, and we may see a day which will boost those temperatures well into the 50s as we head into Thursday, but it also comes with a chance of a few showers too, as the system's cold front will be working through by later in the day. Here's how things look on our hour by hour forecast. Few high level clouds passing through during the late night period. They're quickly out of here tomorrow morning and we'll end up with a fairly bright day and onwards into tomorrow night. It'll be another quiet night of weather and Tuesday itself also looking tranquil about the area. Few degrees cooler than the weather that we'll have about the area for Monday. All right, let's take a look at the temperature trend and see what we have here tomorrow. 50 degrees back into the 40s Tuesday and Wednesday Thursday will spike up into the 50s. Then the temperatures start to come down and note this trend here as we head towards the winter solstice. It does get colder. So enjoy the temperatures that will be a little bit above normal for the time being. That's our normal high now 40 and we'll enjoy those readings above that for about the next five days or so. All right, here's our forecast as we work through tonight. Generally a very quiet night, fair skies, winds subside, but still a bit of a breeze out there, 30 to 35. Heading into tomorrow, we've got a mostly sunny day. It'll be breezy and milder, upper 40s and low 50s over the area. Here's your forecast into the seven day period. A bright and dry day on Tuesday. Wednesday, the clouds increase, but it stays dry. And then come Thursday, it's mild with a chance of showers. We'll squeeze in a dry day on Friday and then the chance of some rain or snow come next Saturday. That system will depart and will be cold and dry for next Sunday. So as you can see there, the temperature trend not bad the bulk of this week before it starts to trend colder as we head into next weekend and beyond. Here's Gardner now with today's sports. Thank you, Craig. Coming up, you Albany and Siena hit the court in the Albany Cup game. Plus, Siena Rugby tries to bring home a national championship. I've got those highlights next in sports. And now, CBS 6 Sports, sponsored by your local upstate Chevy dealers. It took two years, but the Albany Cup is back, at least on the women's side. After last year's rivalry game was canceled due to COVID, Sienna and UAlbany will face off at SefQ Arena with a trophy and bragging rights on the line. This is the 23rd playing of the Crosstown Showdown, with the series tied at 11. The Great Danes are off to a 3-4 and four start, while the visiting Saints have yet to win a game. Before tip-off, Jim Jaber and Colleen Mullen chatting courtside. The coaches said they made it a priority to get this game back on the schedule. It didn't take long for the Danes to start firing. Early in the first, Telly and Hagerstrand spots up from deep. The shot is good and we're underway. A few plays later, Ellen Hani with a tough layup plus the foul. She finishes with 15 points today. The Saints weren't moving the ball well to start the game, but Rachel Brown picked up the slack. 10 points for Brown, most of them coming in the opening half. Still in the first, Amari Anthony knocks down the open jumper. She leads Siena with 12 points today, but the Saints trail 34 to 25 at halftime. Albany's offense clicking on all cylinders. Hagerstrand to Kayla Cooper. She chips in nine points. The Danes starting to pull away in the second half. Hagerstrand wasn't messing around today. A game high 23 points for number 21. And most importantly, the Albany Cup is coming back to you, Albany. The Great Danes improved to four and four on the season with a dominating 64 to 44 win. A year after jumping up from the club to varsity level, the Siena rugby team is one win away from a national championship. Today, the undefeated Saints are taking on Wayne State in the National Collegiate Rugby's Small College Challenge. Siena has dominated its opponents throughout the playoffs. The Saints are coming off a 64 to nothing win over Charleston in the semifinals. But they're facing a tough Wayne State team today. Game's tied at three in the first. Saints are threatening, but there's a momentary stop in play. The Saints take advantage. The try is successful. For those not familiar, a try is kind of similar to a touchdown in American football, but it's worth five points. The teams are tied at 20 with four minutes left to play. Senin Grove reads this perfectly. He recovers the Wayne State turnover and takes it in for the try. That proves to be the game winner. Just a year after jumping up to varsity status, Siena wins the national championship 25 to 20. 
The Saints were a perfect 10-0 this season. Heading to the NFL, kind of like rugby's younger cousin. The Jets are hosting the Saints. If you sat through this game, power to you. It's tied 3-3 in the second quarter. Alvin Kamara bounces to the outside, cuts back. He's gone. 16 yards for the score. New Orleans leads by a touchdown. Saints now up 10 in the fourth quarter. The Jets need to stop to keep this uh, game. Sean Payton just wants more points. Taysom Hill keeps it for a quick two-yard score. Jets offense never gets going. New York fails to score a touchdown and loses 23-9. The Jets are officially eliminated from playoff contention. The Patriots are off this weekend, which means the Bills can make up ground in the AFC East. Today, Buffalo in sunny Florida for a showdown with Mr. Tom Brady. It's scoreless in the first quarter. Brady gives to Leonard Fournette, who rumbles through the line. The Bills defenders, they're just watching him. The former LSU star turns on the Jets, 46 yards to the house. Buck strike first. It's now 10-3 in the second quarter. Brady alone in the shotgun. He zips it to Mike Evans, who snags the ball and brings it down safely. The Bucks lead 24-3 at last check in the third quarter. It has been a rough couple weeks for Bills fans. Yeah, and we were just talking about the Giants. I thought you'd have better news. But yeah, no. so the Giants game is still going on, so we can't air those highlights in the early. Of course, I will have highlights at 11. But they're just getting whomped by the Chargers. It yeah. was like 27 to 3 at last check. You used crushed in the last time. I can only use this. those yeah. words so many different times, yeah, so we'll see. Not your fault. It's not my fault. Don't, but, oh well. Well, don't email me. I'm shocked that the Jets were eliminated from the playoffs. I know. Here. Sorry, Jets fans. <laughs> <laughs> Can sarcasm translate to the TV? <laughs> at least if we're chatting, I hope it I does. I believe it probably does. Yeah. Um, at least we have better weather and we mean that. Yeah. Tomorrow should be up around 50, so enjoy. And nothing too cold for the next few days until we get colder next weekend. Well, I'll take that. All right. That does it for us on CBS 6 News. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll be back here at 11 o'clock. Take care.